The scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Titus, the second chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly possessions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. These then are the things you should teach, encourage and rebuke with all authority, and do not let anyone despise you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a moment ago, the little light on my wireless transmitter pack turns to red. So if sometime during the sermon you in the back can't hear me, wave and I'll crank it up. Because the battery will probably go dead. I read an article the other day with pictures. I like articles with pictures, I don't know about you. This article had pictures of some very creative slogans for Christmas. I just want to share some of them with you. On a Toys R Us, easy for me to say, on a Toys R Us, ho, 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 spoken here. At David's bridal, Merry Christmas, M-A-R-R-Y. At St. Mary's Catholic Church, the original Christmas club. I like that one. At Macy's, big pre-Christmas sale. Come in and mangle with the crowd. <laughs> At a Jared's in Texas, diamond tiaras, $70,000. Three for $200,000. <laughs> I guess some of them Texas daddies have three princesses. <laughs> On a Curves gym, 24 more shaping days till Christmas. <laughs> and finally at Barnes & Noble, for the man who has everything, a calendar to remind him when the payments are due. <laughs> now before I go any further, for those of you who pay any attention whatsoever to the title of the sermon in the bulletin or on the copy that you have, for reasons known but to God, today's sermon title and the sermon have absolutely nothing to do with one another. <laughs> the titles come first and the sermons come later. I don't get it sometimes either. Once upon a time, as an adult now, I was shocked and mortified to learn that the Bible does not tell us that Jesus was born on December 25th. I might have been 30. Now, I don't know if anybody there, I was mostly shocked and mortified that as far as I can remember, no one had said that to me before. If they had, right over my head it went. So I was just befuddled every minute, but I read enough of the New Testament several times to, that it made perfect sense. I couldn't remember any time when there was a, a real solid pinnacle, pinned down date in there. Well, shortly after that, at the Baptist church that I was attending at the time, I have a hard time saying anything like this. The minister of Christian education dismissed an adult Sunday school teacher for revealing the fact to his class that the Bible doesn't say that Jesus was born on December 25th. Fired as a Sunday school teacher for teaching that the Bible doesn't say Jesus was born on Christmas Day. <sighs> I was shocked and mortified again, and I wasn't a Baptist much longer after that either. It's hard enough to teach some of the stuff that is in the Bible, much less to be responsible for traditions that we have developed that have absolutely nothing to do with the Bible. And to get discharged as a Sunday school teacher for a thing like that, it was hard on me. It's hard on him too, I guess. Well, besides the fact that we chose December 25th to celebrate as Jesus' birthday, 
We will not discuss the whys and hows of that today. Did you know that Christmas is only the third most holy day in the Christian year? You know that? Well, if you think about it, you'll probably come to the conclusion rather quickly that Easter is number one, right? That day, the, the last part of what some folks call the Christ event began with Good Friday and, and the Jesus' death on the cross and ended with Sunday morning, Resurrection Day morning when Jesus rose from the dead where he gave light and life to us in our salvation. That is the number one holiday. What about second? Anybody got any guesses? Christmas Eve. What? Christmas Eve. No, ma'am. Pentecost. Good guess though. What? Pentecost. Pentecost. Who said that? I did. Ah, the Bible scholar said that. <laughs> Should have known. Pentecost. The day that the Holy Spirit was given to the church and the church was born. The second holiest day of the year. We got along without Christmas for over 300 years. 300 years we didn't bother with Christmas. Since we got along without Christmas for so long, why, and we didn't even celebrate our own birthdays then. We started celebrating our birthdays after we started celebrating Jesus' birthday. So since we didn't even celebrate our own birthdays, what was the big deal about celebrating Jesus' birthday? Well, I think here in this passage we just read from Titus is one of the reasons that we wanted to celebrate the birthday of Jesus. On the day that Jesus was born, the writer of Titus says, the grace of God that brings salvation appeared to all men, and I suspect women too. That's a big deal. The grace of God that brings salvation. I mean, why else did Jesus come? Except to bring to us and reveal to us the grace of God that brings us our own salvation. Well, people rightly figured out that, you know, it'd be a good thing to celebrate the birth of the person who could do such a thing as that. Jesus actually changed the whole world in that moment on Easter Sunday. He brought the grace of God to us. Christmas Day, the day we celebrate as the day when the grace of God that brought all salvation appeared to all of us, teaches us some things, or at least according to the writer of Titus, it's supposed to. It teaches us some lessons. There are two lessons. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. That's getting harder and harder the further down the road this present age gets. The appearance of God's grace that brings salvation, as it turns out, was a teaching event. Each of us experiences that grace of salvation in our own way. You know, we have contact with God. We understand and, and feel and find out about our salvation in our own way. And each of those experiences has something in common. As we experience the grace of salvation, we begin to learn things. Every one of us learns things about ourselves, and about God and God's grace. And on today, we remind ourselves of the lessons of grace. Remember, there are two lessons that God intends for us to learn, to take away from our experience of God's grace. A no lesson and a yes lesson. Since the author of Titus started with the no lesson, we'll start with the no lesson too. Say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. You know, there are many things that we, do in, that we don't do in public 
that we certainly don't do in church, that are absolutely fine with God. But there are also many things that we can do and do sometimes, both in public and in private, that are not fine with God. Just recently, now I'm not in any way, you know, a, a, an anti-gambling guy, but just recently we have opened a new place down the street where we can gamble away the grocery money and the rent and mortgage payment. We can abuse our spouses or our children. We can get sloppy drunk or use drugs recreationally and addictively. We can cheat on tests and we can cheat on taxes. Now I'm not going to stand here and you certainly won't sit still long enough for me to make a list of all the things that are ungodly and involve worldly passions. But the short form of that lesson is this. If something comes up that we can do and we do not want God seeing us do it, say no to that and just walk away. Because guaranteed, whatever we do, God will see us doing it. And then there's the yes lesson. I like yes lessons better than no lessons anyway. There are plenty of people telling me, no, I can't do this, and no, I can't do that. So I don't need anybody else. I don't need much help with that. But yes lessons, somebody tell me what I can do, and that's harder to come by. So the yes lesson, and a yes lesson is a any control freaks out there? I hear that. Yeah, I see some. I see a few confessions out there. The yes lesson is especially good for us control freaks. It goes like this: Say yes to living self-controlled and upright and godly lives. A real Christmas present for us control freaks. Something that we are at long last encouraged by the Bible to take control of. That's pretty good. More than just controlling our own lives, though. I hear the author, both in the no lesson and in the yes lesson, telling us to, that there's something important that we have to do in order to say yes and to say no. You know what that is? One little word that would have gotten me out of more trouble than any other single word in all of my life, and when I say it, you'll recognize it. Think. Think. If we're going to take control of something, we have to think about what it is. When we're thinking about taking that control, we're supposed to ask ourselves a question. A clarifying question. It will clear, it will make the world and all of our decisions clear for us. Very simple question. Actually not, it's a little wordy. But we ask ourselves this. Is this thing that I'm thinking about doing something that Jesus set me free to do? Or is it something that sent him to the cross? That's the lesson that Christ wanted us to remember when we selected a day to celebrate as his birthday. Merry Christmas. If there's one here today who is a baptized Christian and not a member of this fellowship, and you hear Jesus Christ calling on you to join together with us in worship and in service, Join me here at the front as we stand and sing our hymn of invitation. If there's one here today who is a member of this fellowship, and you hear Jesus Christ calling on you to rededicate yourself to his service, there will never be a better day than this Christmas day to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. And if there's one here today who has never given your life to Jesus Christ, never claimed him as your Savior and your Lord, if you hear him calling you today to join hands with him in your walk to life everlasting, then join me here at the front as we stand and sing our hymn of invitation.